Welcome to this quick video on the Step Wedges Photoshop plugin. Sometimes we need to create step wedges in order to test printers and paper and ink combinations. We need to see how much information we can actually print on a particular type of paper. The reason this is important is that if we're editing a photograph and let's say for example that we've decided that we're going to have the highlight with detail up at around an RGB value of say 253, that's fine because we can probably see that detail on a good calibrated screen. However, not all papers can produce that type of value when it comes to printing it out. So we need to make sure that the type of paper that we're using can actually reproduce that tonal value that we're setting inside of the edit. So this is one of the reasons that we can use step wedges. Although they can be made manually, it can be a, a time consuming process. And this is where the speed of the step wedges plugin really comes into its own. We can create three types of step wedges, a standard 11 steps or a 21 steps, or we can expand that even further and create 51 steps. So let's see how quickly it is to create, say for example, an 11 step step wedge. All we have to do is press the button and it creates the steps for us. We've got 10% increment grayscale patches. We've also got two grayscale ramps running from left to right. That's black all the way through to white. And then from black through to white the other way. These are very good for testing tonal transitions. So when we actually print these out, we can actually see if we've got a nice transition of tones going from pure black all the way through to paper white. The 21 steps looks very much the same, only it contains more steps, but it gives us the same type of information. And then the 51 steps will actually go one stage further and create 51 individual patches. This is really narrowing down different types of transitions, like we're going up in 2% increments. So this really gives us an indication as to how well the printer and paper combination are working. Underneath the hamburger icon, which is this flyout menu, you'll see that we have some options. We can either have small patches or large patches. And for the step layout, this is for the 51, We've got different choices how we want to present that. So currently we're looking at a zigzag type of pattern. If we went for a horizontal wrap, and I'll just recreate the 51 steps, we can see now that we've got a horizontal type wrap. So it starts at 0, 32, and it goes up in this fashion. So there's some different types of layouts we can have. We've also got the option to open up a black and white print test target. This is ideal for really narrowing down the printer. We've got a bullseye type of target in the middle. We've got a nice transitional target here where we can see the transition going from all the way from pure black as it comes through to pure white in the center. We've got an example image at the bottom where we're looking for shadow detail. And then to test the highlights, we've actually got four individual squares here. And these numbers represent the values of the square. So 246 is this one, 248, 250 and 252. So the idea here is, is to print out this test target and let it dry and then look to see if we can actually see any of these four squares. So for example, if we can actually see 250, a difference between this one and this one, and also make sure that we can see a difference between 250 and the base paper white, that quite clearly says that for that particular paper, you'd be quite safe to actually place your highlights around an RGB value of 250 and still see that in the final print. 
Another nice feature of this Step Wedges plugin is the ability to create a zone scale. And the zone scale allows us to visualize what different zones and half zones look like. And it also shows you the RGB values which represent those zones. So to create the zone scale, we just press the zone scale button. It automatically creates the zone scale for us. Let's just pull these out so we can see them. So this is the zone scale. And it shows you a range of zones from 0 through to 10. And it also includes half zones. Beneath each zone patch tells you which zone that patch represents. And then beneath that zone number, we have a numeric value which tells you the RGB value for that particular patch or zone. I like to print this out and just keep it on the desk. It gives me a visual representation of where I'm going with an image. It tells me that if I want something to be placed in zone 8, then I need to be roughly targeting an RGB value of 197. If I want something to be placed on zone 3, which is shadows with detail, that's open detail, then again I want to be targeting around 72. So if I've got an image on screen that I'm working on, what I can quickly do is open up the info panel, which we can do by going to window and then choosing info or pressing the F8 keyboard shortcut and we can move across the image so we'll just highlight the image and as I move across the image what you will see is that as we place the eyedropper across certain tones of the image we're actually seeing the RGB value appear here so if I look at this particular part of the pier wall I've got an RGB value of around 108 on that particular area. I've got 152 there and 157 there. So if we look at that value of 157, then I can see that it's going to fall roughly on zone 6 and a half because that's 156. If we look at some areas of the sky, we've got some clouds there, which is 250. Now that's quite high up on the scale. That's really going between zones 9.5 and 10. So I need to concentrate on that to try and bring that down in value. Because with the type of paper that I'm using at the moment, I can't actually produce a tone above 248, which I got from doing that black and white test target measurement. So we come further down into the image. If we look at the... The water around here, we've got 206, so that falls roughly between zone 8 and zone 8.5. So this is how I use the zone scale, just to quickly scan through the image to make sure that I've got tones roughly where I want them to be. And I'm not actually creating any values which I know are not going to print. So that's the zone scale which is quickly available from this part of the step wedge. So all in all, the step wedge gives us some flexibility where we can create those three individual types of step wedges for testing printer and paper combinations. We can also create the test target where we can analyze the tonal transition of that print. And then finally, we've got the zone scale, which allows us to create this visual representation of all the full and half zones. The zone scale is set to be about 6 inches by 2 inches. So we can print this out quite easily on a single piece of A4 paper. I like to print it on the type of paper that I'm going to be printing the image on. So that also gives me a visual representation of how that or how these tones are going to print on that particular piece of paper. So that's just a quick rundown on the Step Wedges Photoshop plugin. So until next time, thank you for watching. Bye for now.